Hi there. In this introductory lecture, I want to explain to you what a database is, in case you're not familiar. Nowadays, a corporation's most valuable asset, besides employees and customers, is data. The reason is because some of the most critical decisions made by businesses uh, come from analyzing lots and lots of data. This data could be related to customer demographics or transaction histories, surveys, employee performance, social media, basically anything you can think of relating to how a business operates. A company that does not invest heavily in data analytics is basically like a ship in the middle of the ocean with no compass, no map, just drifting around without a direction or strategy. Now keep in mind that there are so many mediums through which data can be collected nowadays. Back in you know the early 90s when we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have all of these different apps, uh, you know, there was less opportunity to collect all of this data. But now we've got phones, we've got apps that we download on these phones. These apps are monitoring our behavior. They're monitoring what ads we watch, what ads we don't watch. They're monitoring our purchase uh, history. Uh, you know, if you log into Amazon.com, Amazon is able to suggest to you what you might want to purchase next based on your purchase history. If you go to Facebook, uh, you know, Facebook knows the things you you like, and then those kinds of ads are presented to you because they are analyzing the data that they are collecting. And these are businesses that care about revenue, so that is what data means to them. And every business nowadays needs to focus on data so that they can target the right audience and make uh, critical decisions about businesses. So all of this data, where is it saved? Typically, it's saved in a relational database. In this course, you're going to learn how to extract critical insight from data that is saved in a relational database. So let's briefly go over how a database works or you know what really what is a database, right? In simple terms, a database is a collection of tables. Right? That's it. That's really in simple terms, right? I'm I'm grossly simplifying this, but really that's all you really need to know. Uh, to, to be successful in database development. The rest of the components of a database you can research on your own and those are not hard. Most of the learning curve in your database experience is going to have to deal with working with tables. All right. And so what are these tables? Well, these tables are what contain the actual data. So you got a database. The database can have several tables and the actual data goes into each one of those tables. So for example, let's say that you have employees working in your corporation and uh, you have a database with the employees table. So if you want to save a new employee that's, that, that you hired in your company, that employee's information should be inserted into the employees table. If you opened a new branch for you know, your store, uh, that branch should be inserted into your you know, for example, stores table. Going back to the employees table for a second, your employee could have a first name, last name, of course, not could have, but of course, they're going to have a first name and a last name, uh, an email address, a phone number, a salary, all of those details will be inserted into the employees table. This course is going to help you master how to get insight from data. And in order to do this, you'll need to master uh, what is called SQL, SQL, uh, which stands for Structured Query Language. And by the end of this course, you'll have gained a lot of experience using the SQL language. And the great thing is, once you learn this language, you can use it to uh, work with other relational databases. Uh, your skills in the SQL language that you learn from this course, your skills will be highly transferable and relevant in a variety of other industries. There are several database vendors out there. You've got Microsoft's SQL Server. Oracle has a database called 11G, 12G. Uh, then you've got uh, MySQL, which is also an Oracle database. And the one we're going to be using in this course is called Postgres. So all of these databases, they all use the SQL language. And you're going to master the SQL language in this course and be able to perform all kinds of analytics and get critical insight from data, regardless of the database. 
So really quickly, let's see how data is stored in a table. So here we have uh, a table. I want you to guess the name. Uh, take a guess as to what this table's name would be in a database. What do you think we would call this? Well, if you're thinking along the same lines as I, I would hope, you probably guessed that this is a, the supplier's table. Right? A company can have suppliers that uh, deliver things. So over here, we've got a list of nine suppliers. Uh, the first supplier, its name is called the Computer Shop. It's in Augusta, Georgia. And there's an ID associated with this supplier. Uh, and you'll notice all of the rest of the suppliers, such as Instant Assembly, Read Time LLC, Roadhouse Inc., all of these have the supplier ID. They have a location, such as, you know, which city and state they are located in. So this table contains supplier's attributes. So if you were to uh, onboard another supplier for your company, you would enter uh, or insert that record into this table. All right. And the ID would be hopefully something different than what you already have here, because these uh, supplier IDs uniquely identify each record. OK, so the computer shop, it has a supplier ID of 100. Instant assembly has a supplier ID of 200. Read time LLC has a supplier ID of 300 and so on. This makes sense, right? Imagine the uh, government's database that keeps track of the entire population in the United States. Every person's name, address, uh, phone number, and that sort of thing is going to be in their database. But most importantly, what would uniquely identify every single person? Well, their social security number. You could have two people with the same name, you know, living in the same address, but their social security number is going to be different. That's what uniquely identifies a particular person. And in this case, what uniquely identifies a supplier is by this uh, you know, supplier ID column that we have here. So going vertically, these are referred to as columns. You've got the supplier ID column. This column is only going to contain supplier IDs. We've got the supplier name column. This column is only going to contain supplier names, right? And then we've got the city and the state columns. So a column is supposed to contain information of the same type. So uh, the city better only have cities. Supplier names better only have supplier names. So you can't put a supplier ID into the supplier name column. That is no, that's a big no-no in, in databases. So this is how information is structured. And horizontally, each record is a particular supplier okay this is a suppliers table so we better only have suppliers it would be a big no-no a big big no-no if i was to put an employee into the suppliers table because guess what the suppliers table can should store supplier information it should not store employee information right the attributes such as supplier name or supplier id don't relate to an employee, right? Where's the first name? Where's the phone number? Where's the address? Those attributes, those columns don't even exist in this table. So if you even accidentally uh, insert uh, that employee information in here by uh, inserting the wrong data in the wrong columns, uh, the database typically is smart enough to tell you, hey, what you're trying to do here is wrong. And uh, databases have a lot of flexibility too. Uh, it's possible that uh, someone that is not aware uh, may insert wrong information into the wrong table. So very important to keep in mind, if this is a supplier's table, it should only have suppliers listed. If it's an employee table, it better only have employees. All right, so hopefully this made sense. Uh, I kept this lecture at a very introductory level. I wanted to go over what a database is, what a table is, uh, especially for those people that have never heard of these terms, never worked with an Excel spreadsheet. People that have worked with Excel probably, of course, already know what a table is, but I wanted to break those details down for you in this lecture so there's no confusion of what a column is, what a row is. Uh, so if you still have confusion in, on those things, uh, just rewatch this lecture and it's going to be pretty clear. But moving forward, we're going to start uh, diving deeper and deeper into this. And by the time you're done with this course, you're going to be a SQL query expert. So stay tuned. I'll see you soon.